Most people set goals terribly. I'm gonna show you 10 ways, like my top 10 tips for setting big goals or little goals that help you accomplish exactly what you want to in 2024. So today is New Year's, if you're watching this on the day I'm making this video, and most people set goals wrong, and that's why they don't actually accomplish anything. 92% of people who set New Year's resolutions give up by the end of January. We're not even talking about like not accomplishing the goal, they give up before the month is even out. So I'm gonna lay out my top 10 tips in reverse order, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, for how to set goals today that are going to 10X your year. Now, who am I? My name is Brian Turner. I'm a real estate investor, 10,000 plus rental units, over almost a billion dollars in real estate bought. Uh, I'm a husband of one, a father of two, uh, and I'm a serial goal setter. Every single year, I am obsessed about January goal setting. Now, I don't actually love annual goals, and that's one of my tips I'm gonna give you later, but I do it every single year for a very important reason I'll get to. Now, these, this goal setting process has not only helped me get those 10,000 units and a billion dollars of real estate, it's improved my marriage, improved my health, improved my speaking ability, it's helped in almost every single area of life. And so I'm excited to share with you today what to do in my top 10 tips. That said, if you like this video, don't forget to click the little like button and let me know that you think it's valuable. Okay, I think we're ready to get into this. Now, I've been teaching goal setting for the last, uh, teaching it for about five years. Every year I do a big goal setting retreat. The first year, I just grabbed a bunch of my friends and we rented a suite in Vegas and 30 of us just set goals. The next year I did it for another group of people. Then I did it from some of my top investors at Open Door Capital. Uh, we call it the Cabana Club. And then just a few weeks ago, I did it for uh, 500 people in Vegas that are part of the Better Life Tribe. Better Life Tribe is a goal setting, um, real estate minded, uh, tribe, group, uh, where we set big goals and we work together to achieve them. It's super cool. Check it out, abetterlife.com. All right, so I did this and I've gotten better every single time. So I'm gonna give you my 10 tips, things that work for me, help make me a millionaire, and I believe will change your life as well. Without further ado, let's get into my top 10 tips. Number 10, start with a reflection on the past and an accurate look at the present. Now let me explain what I mean by that. So when I say a look at the past, I want you to focus only on the positive to begin with. What have you done? What have you accomplished? You know, in the book, The Gap and the Gain by Dr. Ben Hardy and Dan Sullivan, they talk about uh, this idea of the gap is like what you're missing in your life, what you, you're between where you are and where you wanna get to, and the gain is where you've come from. So we wanna focus on the gain. Where have you come from? So do a practice they call in the book like the 10 3 one. What have you accomplished over the last 10 years? What have you accomplished over the last three years? And what have you done over the past year? Jot down as many ideas as you can. It's gonna put you in this moment of gratitude uh, and, and um, expansion in your mind that will allow you to set better goals for the rest of the process. So don't skip this phase. That's, again, tip number 10 is to focus on the past to begin with and the present. And when I say the present, you know, in the Better Life Tribe, we do a practice called the Better Life Wheel. So what this is, imagine a pie that has 10 slices, right? Circle. 10 slices in this pie and every slice is an aspect of your life. So it could be something like your spiritual life, your parenting life, your uh, growth, I call it growth and education. Like, are you learning? Uh, there's your wealth. Uh, there's your job or business. Uh, then there's your uh, fitness, your health and fitness. So we got these 10 categories, right? And we want to rate each one on a scale of one to 10. Where are you in relation to what you could be? Not in relation to that guy over there, or that lady over there, but where are you compared to where you could be, where you want to be on a scale of one to 10. And I like this on that circle, on that pie, I start in the middle and I shade outward one through 10. 10 would be shaded the whole way in that whole pie slice. And a one would be not even shaded hardly at all. And so at the end of the, this little practice, this better life wheel, we get an accurate look at your life and where you're strong and where you're weakest. In other words, where's your wheel flat? Where do you need to apply some extra focus in the coming year? So I recommend starting with that idea of the Better Life Wheel. Again, we will be doing that together, uh, doing some goal setting with the Better Life Tribe and anybody else, guests who wanna come on Thursday, January 4th, 2024. We're doing an actual live three hour goal setting practice. We're gonna be start doing everything we're talking about today, plus a lot more. And guess what? It's all for charity. We're raising a bunch of money for charity for the fight against human trafficking. It's $25 to attend. Just go to the link in my bio, or if you're watching this on Instagram, you can just uh, DM or comment the word 2024 goal. One word, 2024 goal, 2024 goal. One word, no spaces. You can DM it uh, or comment and I will send you a link. Otherwise, just go to the link in my bio, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, whatever. All right, we gotta move on to tip number nine. 
Tip number nine, don't set too many goals. Most people make this mistake of setting five, 10, 20 goals for their future. And when all things matter equally, nothing matters. And so what I recommend and what most experts recommend, science, psychology, like they've done this study that, that less is better. So I recommend a max of three goals. That's it. I know you might be thinking, I want to improve all areas of my life and I got this and that. That's great. And we can categorize things that you want to do. I like to call them ambitions. Jot them down, write them down somewhere if you want to. You're not going to forget about them. Those are ambitions. But what are the three goals? The things that you have to do. That if you just did these three things, you would have a win, a full year. 2024 would be amazing. Now, you still might be saying, well, I got a lot of things I want to work on, Brandon. I mean, I want to, I want to lose weight and I want to go to the gym more often. And I also want to go on more dates with my spouse. And I want to, you know, buy a couple of cash flow and rental properties. All that's fine. Uh, what I want to recommend is to, to put them into categories. What I call there's goals and then there's habits and then there's constraints. So a habit and constraint is similar. That's something you're going to track regularly. And we'll get to that maybe later. You're going to track habits and constraints. So maybe going to the gym three times a week is a habit that I'm going to track. It's not a goal. I'm not going to elevate it to the level of goal. I'm only going to elevate three things. And personally, what I always like to choose is one goal for my three categories I most want to focus on. We just talked about the wheel, that better life wheel. So what three categories do I most want to focus on? That's when I want to set one goal for each of them. Uh, it doesn't have to be your lowest pie slice, but it does want to be the ones that you want to apply effort on. So like, for example, this year I'm focused on the category of my relationship with my wife. So I'm setting a goal around that. I'm going to set a goal around uh, my business, specifically my business world of running the better life tribe and open door capital. And I'm going to set a fitness goal. Those are the three categories. Now, everything else will go into a habit or a constraint, which we'll maybe talk about constraints a little bit later. But now you got three goals and between seven and 10 habits that I'm going to track. So what I like to do is just brainstorm, like what are all the possible things I could possibly do for this goal? And then I'm going to really nail down what's the most important. And then from there, I'm going to establish one goal and the rest go into the habits or constraint section. Moving on. Number eight, realize that goals can be process goals or outcome goals. There's also character goals and learning goals. I'm not going to talk about those right now, but think about process goals and outcome goals. There's two different types here. A process goal is something you do like a certain number of times, like uh, per period. So like I'm going to go to the gym three times a week. So maybe your goal could be to average gym three times a week, or given that there's 13 weeks in a quarter, you could say, I'm going to go to the gym. What's 13 times three, whatever that is 39. Is that right? I'm going to go to the gym 39 times. So 39 times is an outcome three times a week is a process and certain goals work better for process certain ones for outcome. Personally, like if I was going to do the gym goal, I'd probably do a number of times going to the gym. Why? Because if I miss even one week and I don't get there three times this week, well, now I failed my entire quarterly goal. But if it's an outcome goal, I'm going to get there 39 times this quarter. Now all of a sudden I have an outcome that if I, if I did miss a week and only got two, I can now make up for it and get four the next time. So again, every goal can be either an outcome or a process goal, and you can kind of switch between. When I mentioned character goals and learning, character goal is something you want to become better, like a better person. Like I want to be a better husband. That's a character goal. And I want to learn how to analyze rental properties would be a learning goal. Uh, you can set those as well. I just, I generally focus on outcome and process goals when possible. Now that brings me to number seven, <laughs> number seven, and that is I don't actually like annual goals. I think they're important to be able to, to line up where you're going from a long distance, but uh, 12 months is too far away to really understand accurately where you're going, where you are, and do you have the right numbers and metrics to get there? For example, if you're like, I'm going to buy four rental properties this year, that might be a good goal. But what if you could buy six? What if you're just totally undershooting your ability? What if you could only buy two? Cause the market changes, right? I like quarterly goals better. That's, that's why, yes, annual goals are super important, but I also recommend the same time you're setting your annual goals, also establish the same system for quarter one goals. And then every quarter repeat it. That's what we do in the Better Life Tribe. That's what I, uh, the, the top performers I know in the world all do the same thing. Annual goals are fine, but the most important thing is to set those quarterly goals. All right, moving on, number six. Now, I have a lot of friends who set real, like, I mean, a lot of my friends set goals, right? But some of my friends year after year set these absurdly high goals that I like, I look at them. I'm like, there's just no possible way you're going to do that. And like, 
you know, I don't want to be negative to them, but at the same time, like we have to be realistic. And so I love the phrase set goals that are out of reach, but not out of sight. So if you own two rental properties right now, saying I'm going to buy a $50 million apartment complex might be a little out of sight. Now I'm not saying you can't do it. And I know there's 10 X thinking and all that, but what happens is when you continually year after year, set these absurdly high goals and then you just fail to hit them. Like you're 40 pounds overweight. You're going to get a complete six pack by the end of the year. It's just like, well, maybe we need to like pull back a little bit. And I know that's weird to hear from somebody who's like obsessed with goals and, and achievement and personal development, but we have to become uh, integrous with ourselves. We have to do what we're saying we're going to do. And so we have to actually have a chance of hitting those goals. Uh, I love the idea of trying to hit 80% of my goals, like at two, three out of my goals. I want to hit between two and three goals every time. I don't have to hit every goal every time. So if I do that, I'm probably not setting big enough goals, but if I'm hitting none of my goals, I've got a real problem. So set goals that are out of reach, but not out of sight. All right. Number five, this will be a quick one. Set a reward. If you hit the goal, a punishment, if you don't hit the goal and possibly a punishment every time you screw up in a given week, what does that mean? Well, a reward, and by the way, don't overthink that. So I'm not like self, you know, flagellate yourself with is that the word flagellate. Is that what they do with the whips? Yeah. Whatever that thing is. No, I'm not talking about that. Set something fun. Like what's the thing that you've been wanting to buy for a while, but you're like, ah, I probably shouldn't. Like for me, it's like those Apple air, the ear pod things, like the big ones, the Apple like headphones. Like they're like 600 bucks. I would love to have a pair, but every, like, I'm not going to just go buy one. Cause I already have like ear pods, but I set that as a reward. If I get it, great. I'll go buy that for myself. In fact, last quarter I had a big goal and I said, I'm going to buy myself a, a cold plunge. If I hit the goal, I hit the goal, bought a cold plunge. Also a punishment is something like, again, don't go overboard here, but I just did, Hey, no phone for a week. If I don't hit my goal, I don't get to use my phone for a week. Maybe it's something simple like that. Maybe it's something like, Hey, I'm not going to use social media for a month. Maybe it's something related to what would cause you not to hit that goal. For example, if you're like, I'm going to wake up early 50 times in the quarter, and then you only do it 40 times. Well, why didn't you wake up early? What could be a punishment that would make it more likely to hit it next time? Maybe it's, Hey, the next quarter I'm going to, you know, my punishment is for the whole quarter. I can't use anything screen time after eight o'clock, right? So maybe there's a punishment there. And then when I say a punishment, maybe weekly, Here's, here's my worry about people setting goals. And I've done this as well. Let's say you set that goal that says, I'm going to go to the gym 50 times in the quarter. And then halfway through the quarter, you look and you're like, oh shoot, I'm not going to make it. Even if I went every day, I'm not going to make it because I'm just behind. So then you just give up and you just go back to life. Instead, I like to think about it this way with those type of goals. What if every time I messed up, and I didn't hit my weekly number. I just had a punishment of some kind. And maybe it's a silly thing. Maybe it's like, I'm going to donate 50 bucks to the opposite political party that I believe in. Um, it's just something that hurts just a little bit so that I, every week I'm reset with, okay, I'm going to get back on track this time. So it doesn't have to be a, I hit the goal. Didn't hit the goal. It could also just be a, if I don't hit the goal in a given week, I'm going to do X, Y, or Z. Tip number four, you've heard this before, the idea of smart goals. I want to add on two more letters on there. Smarter goals. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but let me just read what they are. Smarter goal stands for set a goal that is specific. Like, do you, did you actually do it? Did I not just lose weight, but did I lose 20 pounds measurable again is, can you measure it? Can you prove you did it or didn't do it? 20 pounds is measurable. Uh, S M A A is attainable. Is it actually realistically? Can you do it? Uh, S M A R smart, uh, R stands for, uh, relevant. Is it related to your like actual like life that you want to accomplish? Like your vision for your life. It's one thing we do in the better life tribe is we talk a lot about your future, you, your five year future, you. So does it line up with that? Uh, S M A R T T stands for time bound. Is it very clearly, this has to be done by this date end a year end a quarter, whatever. And then E R exciting and risky. Exciting. Does it actually fire you up and make you want to do it? And R risky, meaning is there a chance you won't get it? Doesn't mean like risky, like, Hey, you're going to do a gamble. It just means like, Hey, if it's guaranteed, like that's not really a good goal. Like if you're already going to the gym 50 times a quarter and you set a goal to go to the gym 50 times this quarter, maybe just move the goal thing to a, a habit that you're tracking, not a goal. Cause it's not very risky. You're going to do it anyway. All right. Tip number three, don't tell everybody about your goals. That I know a lot of people like want to go post on Instagram or Facebook. Here's my goals. Here's what I'm going to accomplish. But studies show that when you do that, you get this little like, you know, dopamine hit. Cause everyone's like, yeah, you got this. You can do it. And it's lowers the chance of you actually accomplishing the goal. When you get public praise for announcing your goal, the chance of accomplishing the goal actually goes down. But 
when you tell a select few people who are going to hold you accountable, the chance of your goal goes dramatically up. That's why in the Better Life Tribe, we've got a lot of pods. We've got hundreds of pods. People get together every single week to talk about their goal with five, six, seven other people. Very important that you get a group of people around you who can hold you accountable to the goal, but again, don't publicly blast it. Number two, actually set aside the time to do this right. What I mean by that is like, don't just be like, hey, I'll just do goals over dinner, or hey, I'm watching the game right now, I guess I'll set goals right now uh, while watching the game. Or hey, I got 20 minutes to kill between these two activities, let me do it right now. Listen, true goal setting takes several hours. In fact, usually we spend two days on it in the Better Life Tribe, we spend two full days to really do it right. Now the goal setting retreat I'm hosting on Thursday, uh, is a three hour class and we're gonna go really rapidly through it. I would say minimum spend three hours. Now you might be thinking like, what? Why would I spend three hours? Because it's your life, it's important. If where you wanna head is important, spend the time to really go through the process correctly. And again, if you wanna do it with us, just go to the link in my bio. I'd love to have you join us on that goal setting retreat. And that leads us to tip number one. Set goals with your romantic partner, your spouse, your husband, your wife, if you don't have one, boyfriend, girlfriend. If you don't have that, set it with your mom or with your business partner. But setting goals together with a spouse or with your loved one is the, I believe, the number one most important way to grow together, to strengthen your relationship. It's gotta be at least top three of best ways to grow as a, as a couple. It doesn't matter if they're into the same things you are. Like it doesn't matter if their goals are they want to build a billion dollar empire or they want to drink more water. It doesn't matter. But just sitting down together and going through this process and asking each other questions and helping them each other, each other through it changes the game. It's going to improve your marriage and dramatically improve the chance that you actually accomplish your goal. Now, if you watch all the way through this video, I hope you like it. Click that heart button, comment below, and let me know if you're coming to the goal setting retreat. I'd love to have you there. And lastly, remember, you are the driver of your life. So get in the front seat and drive it to where you want in 2024. Let's go.